what the Bible teaches us in Acts chapter 12. We'll begin reading in verse 5 when you have it. Say amen. Read this way. It says, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to him, to God for him by the, ch by the church. And when Herod uh, was about to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping bound with two chains between two soldiers. And the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off of his hands. Then the angel said to him, Gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him and did not know what was done by the angel, whether it was real but thought he was seeing a vision. And when they were past the first and second guard posts, they came to the iron gate that led to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and went down one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the Jewish people. And this morning, I, I, I have a very simple mesh, mess, uh, title of this message, especially if you're a Christian, you've been serving a little while. The title of this message is Push. Push. Someone say push. And what does push mean? Pray until something happens. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them, keep on pushing. You may be seated. How many know uh, when, when, when you push, when you push, it'll change the outcome, right? You know, using this story as a backdrop, we find that the political powers were doing all they could to silence and stop the church's mission. And right here in Acts 5, we see that the church was really fighting against the highest powers in the land the highest powers in the land but if you've been serving God a little while you know that the highest powers in the land are not physical but they're spiritual you know that we're not fighting government we're not fighting circumstance but how many know as Christians we fight spiritual uh, 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 we, we fight spirits in the heavenly realms and that's why Jesus taught us to pray Look over at your neighbor and tell him, you got to learn to pray. You got to learn to pray. Jesus taught us to pray. He taught his disciples to pray. And he teaches us to pray. Watch this. Because your problem is in heavenly places. I'll say it one more time. He wants us to pray because your problem is in heavenly places. Prayer is our earthly means to enter into the heavenly realm. It's the vehicle to get into the heavenly realm. If your problem is in heavenly places. How many know you've got to get into the heavenly realm? And in order to get into the heavenly realm, you can only do it by way of prayer. Someone say pray. pray. See, prayer takes you into the realm where real problems are solved. And, and, and I feel like that's a word this morning for some of you because some of you are here and you've got some real problems. You got some real problems. You, you got some real situations going on in your life. And, and you can fuss and, and kick and scream all you want. Come on, don't act like you don't fuss and kick and scream. You can fuss and kick and scream all you want. But the only way you're going to change your situation is you got to change it in heavenly territory. Come on and clap for the Lord. You, you got you to go in. You, you got to go in because what is prayer? Watch this. Prayer is earth, earthly permission for heavenly interference. And I think that's what we need. We need some heavenly interference. We need some supernatural interference into our situation. God bless two of you. Come on, somebody. We need some heavenly intervention. We need some Holy Ghost interference. We need the power of God to change our situation. See, what we should see is that whenever the church came under persecution here in Acts 5, the church was strengthened through prayer. 
Every time the church was pressured. Have you ever been pressured? Every time the church was uh, somehow under attack, that's when the church began to activate prayer. And what the evidence shows is that when prayer was activated, miracles were released. Say this with me. Say, when prayer is activated, miracles are released. Oh, I think you say it again. Say, when prayer is activated, miracles are released. See, the marking of the early church was miracles. Miracles. The power of God was active in the early church. And I think if we're going to be a church like the book of Acts, the power of God should be active in our midst. The power was so strong on that church that it even gained the attention of those who were coming against them. In Acts chapter 5, the Bible says a Pharisee named Gamaliel, who was a teacher of the law, we find that he was also Paul's teacher. He was honored by all the people. He stood up in, again, with the Sanhedrin. He, he took the, pulled the disciples out of the courtroom. And basically, this is what he said to those that were coming against the church. He said, leave these men alone. Let them go. He said, if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. He said, but if it's from God, you will not be able to stop these men because you won't be fighting them. You will be fighting God. Can I hear an amen? And I came to tell you that you have heavenly backing this morning. I came to tell you, I know your situation might look impossible. I know it looks like you're up against the wall. I know it looks like you're not going to make it out of this storm. But I came to tell you on a Sunday morning, you've got some heavenly backing. If God be for you, who could be against you? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And that's why you don't have to pray. That's why you get to pray. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you get to pray. See, prayer, watch this, is the way the church penetrates enemy lines. And that's what we're doing. We're penetrating enemy lines. Prayer first turns the outcome in the heavenlies before it turns it in the natural. It turns the outcome. It changes the outcome in the heavenlies. And I think that's so key because you need to learn to change it in the heavenlies. Prayer changes things. But to win the victory, the church has to discover prayer for herself. We, we have to discover prayer as a means for supernatural victory. How many of you ready? How many ready? Oh, come on. God bless just a, how many say I'm ready for some supernatural victory in my life. See, man, there's four ways people can fight their circumstances. And this might just be for a few of you. You know, first you can run. Some people run. When, when circumstances break out, they run. Jonah ran. Right. Jonah ran from God and he found himself in, in, in the belly of a whale. We know how that ended up. So there's a few ways people can deal with their problems or circumstances. You can run or you can hide. You, you can hide. Elijah hid. He was up against uh, Jezebel, and he was in an impossible situation, and he hid. He, he hid under a tree. He hid in a cave, right? And, and what happened when he hid? He became discouraged. How many know that one Christian that when trials break out, they go and hide, and then they wonder why they're discouraged? He was discouraged unto death, and fear led him to discouragement, and discouragement led him to wanting to actually just die and end it all until the Lord showed up. There's different ways we can deal with our circumstances. You can run, you can hide, or like some of you do, you can fight in the flesh. Fight with your old lady in the flesh. Try it. See how that works out. Fight with your own man in the flesh. Go ahead. Try it. See how that works out. David fought in the flesh. He made a big mistake. He fell with Bathsheba. And then he tried to cover it by killing Uriah, her husband, plotting his murder. And what we learn is that when you do it in the flesh, God will always expose you. 
Come on, somebody. Your sin will find you out. And, and, and the name and the prophet came and he exposed David's sin to him. And David's sin was judged. And David certainly suffered the consequences. Listen, there's different ways to deal with your problems. You can run. You can hide. You can fight in the flesh. Or fourthly, you can pray. Come on, somebody. You can pray. You, you, you can begin to pray and begin to move the situation in the heavenlies. Prayer is the pattern for your deliverance. I'll say it again. Prayer is the pattern for your deliverance. You need deliverance. You need a change in your marriage. You need a change in your family. You need miracles in your life. Prayer is your pattern for deliverance. And that's why Jesus commissioned the church to pray. That's why the early church practiced prayer. And that's why the early church experienced results. See, the Bible says pray. Someone say pray. There are 650 recorded prayers in the Bible. There are 450 recorded answered prayers. The Bible records that Jesus prayed 25 times in his earthly ministry. Paul mentions prayer 41 times in the books he wrote. The Bible mentions five different physical positions for prayer. And what that tells me is there's no excuse. There's no excuse not to pray. He, he, it mentions five physical positions for prayer. Standing, sitting, kneeling, being face down, or having your hands lifted. Come on, somebody. See, it doesn't matter if you stand up and pray, or you jump and pray, or you spin in a circle and pray, or you lay down fat, flat on your face, or you just sit in your most comfortable chair in prayer. The Bible says there's no excuse, but you just got to pray. You just got to tap into the presence of God, because the way you're going to get the victory is you got to pray just to make it today. Oh, come on and clap for the Lord. You got to pray. You've got to pray. Victory Outreach San Diego, you've got to learn to pray. Stop fighting. Stop doing it in the natural. Get into prayer. You can stand. You can sit. You can jump. You can run. You can do whatever you got to do. Because, watch, it's not the position of your physical body. It's the position of your heart this morning. He's looking for somebody that will believe him for the supernatural. Come on and give him praise right now. I see your situation turning. I see your marriage getting better. I see your body getting healed. Maybe not all of you, but the ones that are willing to pray. The ones that are willing to move it in the heavenlies. Woo! Touch your neighbor and tell them you got to pray. The Bible talks about nine types of prayer. The prayer of faith, the prayer of agreement, the prayer of request, the prayer of thanksgiving, the prayer of worship, the prayer of consecration, the prayer of intercession, the prayer of imprecation. Don't do that one. And the prayers in the spirit. God's pattern for his church is not just preaching, but prayer. We do so much preaching. Come on, somebody. We've seen the announcements, right? All the events, a lot of preaching going on, preaching in the streets and preaching in the discipleship. And we got three preachers that morning, a sermonette, and then a sermonette for the sermonette. And then you call up the person to do the announcements, and they preach the announcements. And you call up the person to do the offering, and they preach the offering. And then you've got the main preacher. Can I hear an amen? And all the church wants to do is preach, 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 preach. But the pattern of the early church wasn't just preaching. The pattern of the early church was prayer. Watch. We spend hours talking to men about God. But what would happen if we spent hours talking to God about men? Maybe then the marriage would go to another level. Maybe then there would be healing. Can I hear an amen? Maybe then that's when miracle. Is there anybody that wants to turn it in the heavenlies? You've got to pray. You've got to fast. You've got to move it in the heavenly. That's good stuff right there. Can I hear an amen? You've got to pray. We've got to follow the pattern of the church of Acts. The three patterns I want to bring out here today, and then I'll let you go. You with me so far? Number one. 
is the pattern of prayer intercession. Say that with me. Say prayer intercession. Because when you look at the scripture, we find that the Bible says constant prayer was offered to God for Peter by the church. The church was involved in prayer intercession. Now, intercession in its simplest terms is simply when we pray for someone else. When we pray for someone else. See, see, this is so important because we spend so much time praying for ourselves. But the situation is not going to change until you learn to pray for somebody else. Come on, somebody. And it's when we pray for someone else. What is intercession? Watch this. Intercession is loving prayer. John Calvin said, to make intercession for men is the most powerful and practical way we can express our love for them. Mm, that's so good. Stop yelling at them. Start praying for them. Stop nagging them. Start praying for them. Stop harassing them. Start praying for them. Come on, somebody. Stop preaching on them. Start praying for them. See, intercession is our mission. If we want to be like the Church of Acts, intercession is our mission. Because God told Ezekiel in the Old Testament that he looked for a man who would build the wall and stand in the gap. You remember that scripture? But then it goes on to say he found no one. He looked for a man to build the wall and stand in the gap for the people, but he found no one. So what did God have to do? He says, I have no one to stand in the gap. I have no one to intercede for the people. I have no one to pray. So what did he have to do? He had to send his only begotten son. And Jesus came in. He died for our sin, right? And he resurrected. And the Bible tells us that he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And according to Paul, he says he makes intercession for him. Come on, you, you ought to be grateful. Because even if you don't have anybody here on the earth praying for you, Jesus is making intercession for you. But then he says, then Jesus looks at the disciples and he says, I'm going to, on this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against us. It, notice that the weapon will be formed against the church, but the weapon will not prosper against the praying church. Come on, help me a little. Come on, help me a little. Let me know you're catching this. The weapon will form against the church, but it will not prosper against a church that knows how to intercede. A church that knows how to pray for one another. A church that knows how to pray for those who are sick in body. A church that knows how to pray for marriages. A church that knows how to pray for young people. A church that knows how to pray for the law. Come on, somebody. No weapon formed against us shall prosper against a church that knows how to intercede. And that's why I tell you, don't stop praying. Look at your neighbor and tell him, don't stop praying. Listen, don't stop praying for your marriage. Stop fighting with your spouse and start praying for your spouse. Don't stop praying for your unsaved children. They may not be in the house of the Lord yet, but I tell you, they're on their way. They're going to get saved. We're turning it in the heavenlies. Don't stop praying for your finances. Don't stop praying for your healing. Because when we pray, that's when things begin to happen. What's the second pattern here we find? It is the pattern of peace and confidence and comfort. The, the, the pattern of peace, confidence, and comfort. Look at your neighbor and just tell them, peace be with you. Prayer ushers the peace of God into our life. Catch this. Prayer ushers the peace of God into our life. Paul said, make your request known to God. Watch this. And the what? The peace that surpasses all understanding. Well, what? Guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Is it true or not? 
One of the markings of the early church was not only the prayer, but it was the peace that comes along with the prayer. It was the powerful and profound peace that fills the people of God in the midst of their storm. The Bible says that even though Peter was in prison, he was asleep between two guards. Now, I've never been in prison myself, but I know some of y'all have. And Peter was asleep, totally comforted by the power of the Holy Spirit. He slept in the midst of his test. And what we love about the early church and what we need to walk away with this morning is that even under profound persecution, the early church found profound peace because of prayer. And this is the part of the promise of the Holy Ghost. This is what makes you and I different than the world. Because we are different than the world. Okay, some of us are different than the world. We're different than the world. We have power they don't have. We have weaponry they don't have. We have tools they, they don't have. We have backing that they don't have. And the Holy Spirit will become manifest in your life when you find yourself in a storm. Have you ever been in a storm? The Holy Spirit will always manifest your, in your life according to your need. Maybe you're facing a test in your character. Maybe your character is under pressure. Your character is under attack. The Holy Spirit will come in the form of perseverance in your life. In other words, when your character is put to the test, perseverance shows up and you will not give up in the midst of the fights. Maybe you're being tested in your finances. And you're learning to give and keep God first in your finances. And you're learning to fulfill your vow or pledge to the Lord. The Holy Spirit will show up in your life in the form of supernatural provision. It'll happen. Maybe you're involved in spiritual warfare this morning. And you're doing spiritual warfare. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will manifest in your life in the form of something called might. Might, short for mighty. The Bible says, be strong in the power of his might. That when you are in the midst of spiritual warfare and the devil is throwing everything at you plus the kitchen sink and you are in prayer and you are in fasting, I came to tell you when the Holy Spirit shows up in your life, you are mighty in the power of God. Come on, you will stand against any devil. You will stand against, oh, come on, somebody. No giant will take you down because he's given you the Holy Spirit and you stand in the power of his might. What about ministry? You're trying to do the ministry. You're trying to make a difference. But you have something the world has not. You have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit becomes manifest in your life in the form of something called the anointing. And I want to tell you, if you're doing ministry, the only thing that is going to change people is the anointing of God. I don't care how cute you are, how talented you are, how well you speak, how well you dress. I don't care if you have perfect teeth. Come on, somebody. The Holy Spirit's the only thing that makes a difference through the anointing that breaks the yokes of bondage. And that's what we need. We need leaders in the church that have an anointing. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me. Come on, somebody. Even Jesus needed the anointing. And God is raising up a church in San Diego that knows how to move in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Woo. You have power. You're different than the world in the form of leadership. And that's so important. When you're trying to lead your family, you're trying to lead your business, you're trying to lead in the church. How I many know God's called us to be leaders? In the form of leadership, the, the Holy Spirit becomes manifest. When you're being tested in your leadership, the Holy Spirit becomes manifest in something called authority. The word authority in the Greek is the word exousia. Exousia. And that simply means 
authority or jurisdiction over a territory. Now, I know we have some, some of you, you've been in trouble with the law. And when I say that word jurisdiction, you know exactly what that means. You did a crime here and you got to get out of that jurisdiction. It, it, it's the authority given by legal right. And what the Holy Spirit is saying to you is that if you are a leader, he has given you authority that you have legal right over the territory God has given you. That's why God told Joshua, wherever you put your foot, that land belongs to you. Come on. And that's why we need some people in Victory Outreach to start walking in spiritual authority, knowing that God has given you jurisdiction over your home. He's given you jurisdiction over your job. He's given you jurisdiction over your children. That when the devil tries to come in, come on, somebody, you begin to take authority and say, devil, I cast you out in the mighty name of Jesus. I've got authority. I have power. Power. I am a leader in the oh come on somebody use your authority Woo. man I feel strengthened already when it comes to miracles the Holy Spirit becomes manifest through faith through faith he gives you the faith to move mountains and then lastly when you're being tested like Peter when you find yourself in the hardest struggles of your life, the Holy Spirit becomes manifest in something called comfort. He says, I'll comfort you through the test. I, I, I may not move the test, but I'll strengthen you through it. You won't suffer. You won't, you, you won't lose. Can I hear an amen? I'll comfort you. I'll give you strength. Can I hear an amen? You see, this is what makes us different than the world. This is what makes you and I different than the world because when the world has problems, they freak out. Talk to me. They freak out. They don't know how to act. They go on Facebook and start. They talk negative to people. They hurt people. Some of them get high because that's how the world responds to tests. But how many know we are no longer in the world? We are a Holy Ghost filled intercessory prayer church. And what makes us different than the world is that when problems come our way, we don't freak out. We have the power of the Holy Ghost. We know how to act in the presence of the Lord. Am I talking to the right people this morning? Is there anyone here that is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is in you. He's with you. He loves you. He's all over you this morning. And he sets you apart. Storms don't have to rock you. Storms don't have to take you out of the house of the Lord. Tests shouldn't take you out of the house. They should take you to the altar this morning. What's the final pattern? Did you get something today? It's the pattern not only of peace, confidence, and comfort. But lastly, it's the pattern of power through miracles. We're looking at Acts 5. Peter was locked in prison. The people prayed. They used their authority. The angels showed up, opened up prison doors. Peter got up. Angel, the angel was rough, too. He showed up to get up. I think the Bible says he tapped him. Hey, big dummy, everybody's praying for you. Get up. And he was so out of it, he was like drunk in the spirit. He's like, what, is this for real? Touch your neighbor and say, get up. Someone's praying for you. Ooh, I feel the Holy Spirit right now. Touch him. Tell him, get out of that funk. Someone's praying for you. <laughs> the power through miracles. Prayer brings the breakthrough. So simple, but let me say, prayer brings the breakthrough. But we've got to use it. We've got to use what we got. Look at you every time. You've got to use what you got. 
there was a bodybuilder who went to Africa, and this guy was buffed. I remember seeing those bodybuilders. I remember meeting, me and Georgina met Lee Haney one time, Mr. Olympia, at a Chipotle. That's where we met him, at Chipotle in Vegas. Guy was huge. He had muscles on muscles, man. And super nice guy. And there was this bodybuilder that went to Africa, super buffed. He went into a little village to entertain the villagers. So he went into the village and, you know, had all the oil. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and he started to do his poses. You know, I, I'm not going to do it, but, you know, you get the picture. <laughs> and he started to show off his physique. I mean, the guy was ripped. He had muscles all over. And he put on a great show, did all the twists and turns and the positions. And at the end of the show, the tribal leader came up to the man and said, that was awesome. That was so extremely impressive. I don't think I've ever seen muscles on a human being like that before. And the bodybuilder said, thank you very much. Then the tribal leader said to him, let me ask you a question. What else do you use all that muscle for? <laughs> Simple question. And, and the bodybuilder said to him, not much, nothing else. I just do this. <laughs> to which the tribal leader said to him, what a waste. <laughs> to have all that muscle and not use it. That's your word. That's your word. You have the power. You have the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on and clap. Come on and clap. You, it's in you. Come on, you're filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Come on up. You're filled with the power of God. What a shame to sit on it. What a shame just to come to church and act religious. What, what a shame to have a know-it-all mentality, but you ain't killing no devils, and you're not casting down no strongholds, and you're not letting the Lord use you. And God wants to raise up a church that's going to use the power that he has given them. You've got the power. You've got the power to change the marriage. You've got the power to change the family. You've got the power. Come on and keep clapping. You've got the power to usher healing into your life. And you got to begin to use it this morning. Touch someone and tell me you got to use it. See, you, you don't pray to get into the presence of God. You're already in by the blood. You, you don't pray to get into the presence of God. You're already in. Tell your neighbor, you're already in. And what I say to you is if you're already in, act accordingly. You're already in the presence of the king. You're already in the throne room. You washed with the blood. Now, if you need to get washed this morning, we're going to make an altar call. You can get washed. Some of y'all need to get washed. But how many of you are already washed? Come on, you don't need to be washed 10 times. How many of you have been washed by the blood? You're already in. You're already in. Act accordingly. Act accordingly. You're already in the presence of the king. You're already in the presence of everything that you need. Act accordingly. Ask him. Prayer is simply asking him to do what his word says he will already do. You need a healing? Ask him to heal you. You need a miracle? Ask him for the miracle. You need a breakthrough? Say, Lord, I need the breakthrough. You're dry. You're dry, you're dry, you're already in. So say, Lord, I don't want to be dry anymore. Saturate me with your presence. Saturate me with your anointing. You want to go to another level? Say, Lord, I want to go to another level. Come on, somebody. You're already in. Act accordingly. You're already in his presence. You're already in the place of healing. Act accordingly. Act accordingly. Act accordingly. I don't know what you need this morning. But I know you, you need something. We all need something. And right now, I, I, don't, I don't want you to look at me. Stop looking at me. 
Take your eyes off me, man. I, don't look at me. Thank you. Some of the sisters just went like that. Look at the Lord. The angels can't see him. Remember what Tim said? But you can see his glory. You're in his presence. You need healing? Go for it. But you're not going to get it by doing what you normally do. You, you're going to have to either stand, sit, lay down on your face, lift up your hands, but you've got to pray. Start praying right now. Come on, start praying right now. Open up your voice to the Lord. You have having marital problems. Go to the Lord about it. You have financial troubles. Go to the Lord about it. Come on, begin to turn it in the heavenlies right now. Begin to turn it. Oh, I feel this is such a strong word. I feel like something was unlocked. Come on, right now. Go, 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 go. If you, if, you, if you want to speak in that heavenly language, go. The, the, man who, the man who prays in the spirit talks to God. Oh, go. Lord, we need miracles in this place. We need a release of miracles. Man, if, if, if I, 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 when I needed a miracle, I didn't care who was standing around me. I didn't care who was around me. I just said, God, I need you to move in my life. I, I begin to raise my voice. I, I wanted things to change. So I begin to pray. I begin to pray. And I was bold about it. I was unashamed. I wasn't religious. I just said, God, I, I need you to move in my daughter's life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, the altars are open right now.